Hi, uh, I am Shiva Agarwal and I am here to walk you through the application process of Sir Sayed Global Scholar Award. You can see here I have filled my full name, my email address and my stream which is say science and my gender, my contact number. I have entered my password and I have entered the same password in the confirm password. So let me continue with this process and this will give you a link in your email and uh, if you have you should also check your spam folder for the email. So I'm waiting for my email right now. And once I receive the email, I can then verify my, my account. So it might take a little time for the email to come to you. So you should wait for the email to, to be there. Make sure you also check your uh, spam folder so that the that the email is not in your spam. So I have just received my email from I will click this link to uh, verify my account. Now I can log in now and I will again enter my email address and my password which I have put and I can now start with my application. So very first thing is to read these instructions very well because uh, to complete the this this application you need to first of all review if you fit into a certain category or not. First of all, you need to check the uh, eligibility criteria. Okay, so let's go through these instructions one by one. So the application form is divided into six parts, which you can see from here, from the steps. And so if you've completed the uh, application, then you'll see that the, that the uh, steps will be, there will be a tick mark on the steps. And on step six, you need to submit your application. Also, make sure you use a modern browser like Google Chrome or Firefox and do not use your phone to uh, complete this application. Seventh, the seventh point is please read the eligibility criteria. So let's review the eligibility criteria for the for this award. Okay, I hope you can see the eligibility criteria here. which is first of all, uh, these are the carrot buttons. You need to click on them to review the el eligibility criteria. So one thing which is important is you should be enrolled at Aligarh Muslim University or you should be an al alumnus. Second thing, th thing is that you should be registered for final or penultimate year of a four year bachelor's program or have completed four years of education, which is very important to apply in this program. You can also read the example cases if you're eligible or not. Okay, so read these example cases and make sure you fit in this uh, eligible criteria to apply in this uh, application. You can also see some ineligible cases and you can make sure that you, uh, uh, if you're not in the eligible, if you're not eligible for this award, then you should not apply. And once you're eligible, you just need to click I am eligible and just need to proceed to the form. We also have FAQ section. You can look into the FAQ section for any general queries if you have. But if you have other queries, you can just contact us at contact at the rate ssgsa.us. All right. So let's proceed to the form and see what information we need to fill. So are you a current student or an alumnus of Aligarh Muslim University? Yes, I am. And I need to fill my AMU enrollment number. Make sure you fill your AMU enrollment number and not your uh, faculty number. Okay, so it can be something like, uh, let's say, um, GH7709 or something you, you have. It should be in the correct format. Okay, so 
and you can see when you are filling the form you the this wheel will be running which which which, which says that you are on this particular step and once you save information and proceed to next step the wheel will turn to a green tick okay so i'm applying for ssgsa and present degree or stream let's say my present degree is uh, msc mathematics okay and last degree obtained from amu was let's say bsc uh, mathematics okay so you can fill this information now you need to fill your academic record so the first four rows are mandatory for those programs where you have bachelors of three years but for btech the first four rows are not mandatory okay so for my masters i need to fill my major branch or subjects let's say my masters is in mathematics and my expected year of completion it's is let's say 2022 my board university was let's say amu and my institute department was say well is it it's it should be mathematics okay. uh, you can fill the percentage C, cgpa whatever it was let's say eight and course duration you can fill for your program okay all right for bachelors let's say my bachelors was again mathematics so i will be filling this information and expected year of, of completion you will be filling the the year in which you completed this degree and let's say it was in 2020 and board was again amu and department was again mathematics and cgpa was let's say seven and my course duration was like say three years okay for 12th diploma engineering i can write my major or my subjects let's say it was pcm and i completed this uh, my 12th in 2017 my board was say cbse okay and my institute in the institute department you need to fill your school name let's say i can fill like xyz uh, school okay whatever school you went to you should put your name here uh, percentage cgpa you can fill like you got something like 8 cgpa or 9 cgpa okay you see that the course duration is already filled to be one year so you should not worry about this particular number you should leave it as one okay you can do the same thing here for the 10th standard you can put the subjects because you do not have any uh, branches or any majors so you can put any subject like let's say english okay science and mathematics all the subjects you had you can fill in and you can write let's say 2016 was my year of completion and cbse i did my was my board and again the same any school i can fill and cgp or percentage you can fill let's say it was 10 and again you'll see that the course duration is one year okay and i'll save this information and proceed to the next step oh, oh you also need to make sure that you actually click on these carrot buttons okay to make them one or else you'll get message like you haven't filled this part okay so now i'm we are good to go to proceed to the next step okay so now you have your uh, achievements your curricular and co-curricular achievements here you can fill out uh, in the curricular maybe let's say you have received a gold medal or you have presented a, a you have presented a paper somewhere so you can list these numbers here okay and when you list these these numbers you need to make sure that if you are copying your uh, all these uh, all this like let's say you have written this information in in some other text editor you're copying this uh, this whatever you have written into this particular uh, box make sure that you do not have any typos here okay that everything is in the correct format so i can list my achievements and for co-curricular I, I can also list my co-curricular activities let's say you were a cricket captain in your school or in the university or you got first rank in debate competition or you joined ncc then you can also mention this thing here okay uh, the eighth 
question is have you taken GRE, GMAT, TOEFL or IELTS? If you have taken then you can write yes, you can provide your scores. If not you will take this, you can write I'll take this in near future and this will have no effect on your application because we will actually be working with you to help you prepare for GRE, GMAT or TOEFL or IELTS. Okay? And you need, you need not you need to have a passport to appear, appear for GRE and TOEFL and we suggest that you apply for a passport if you haven't already so you need to make sure that when you uh, when you will be giving GR in TOEFL you will be asked for your passport okay all right so I can now save information proceed to the next step now in this part you have the you have something like personalized essays and you have questions which are pretty much self-explained Please provide so you need to provide the written responses to the following mandatory questions so first question is about your uh, example of something that you have been a part of created or led it can be non-academic maybe you're a part of the cricket team or hockey team and you can just mention this thing and it should not be uh, it should be in maximum 200 words so take care of the word limit as well okay so you can list anything which you which you did Second question is describe a challenge you overcame as a student and how has this experience helped you define and shape your personal and professional goals? And it could be any challenge like you were in a course and you found it challenging. So what you actually did to master this course or maybe it was your first time leaving your home to come to study at a different city. So how you coped up with all those uh, challenges and you can mention this thing in this particular second question okay so i can mention this thing and also take care of the word limits you can also make use of these uh, options which are which are general options you find in any text editor okay now the third thing is briefly list and describe your areas of interest and your future plans to contribute to them you should have clarity regarding your future plans in your field of study and this question is about that okay now we have the very last question. We have the very last uh, personalized essay question, which is why do you want to apply for SSGSA award and what do you hope to do afterward with this award? Also, it asks you what is your motivation to study overseas? So when you apply for the SSGSA, you need to make sure that you will be pursuing your study from abroad. Else this will leave behind those students who are truly in need of, of, of award, of SSGSA award. So make sure you only apply when you are sure that you will be pursuing your study okay and the last question is if you if you were the current chair at SSGSA what would be your top three priorities and why so this question is pretty much self-explained and you can just uh, answer this question okay all right now we come to the referees part uh, you need to have three referees in order to proceed we do not need the information for the referees we just want you to make sure that you have three referees in order to proceed and you can see you can read the FAQ uh, that who can be your who can be considered a valid referee so make sure you also read this information and if you have three referees you can then just click on this information and and we can ask for the referees details in near future okay so now I can save information and proceed to the next step now in my uh, step five I have uh, I have to upload some uh, some some documents like mark sheets of class 10 so maybe I can say select some file and uh, choose my mark sheet okay and I can upload this this file so the maximum allowed size is just 10 megabytes if you think your uh, your document is bigger than 10 MB then you can use there are many online software there are many online applications which can help you reduce the the data size okay of your of your, of your document so you can make use of them you can also upload your um, also upload your class 12th mark sheet okay i can upload my class 12th mark sheet and you see these stars they mean that that the that it is mandatory to upload the the document so without uploading the document in the marked star sign you won't be able to proceed further so i need to upload all those documents my bachelor's mark sheet okay 
so you can see mark sheet of masters if any if you are in masters or if you have completed a masters then you will be uploading the uploading the document if you are let's say in a btec program then you do not need to upload any masters mark sheet okay all mark sheet of your diploma or degree this is this is for those who have uh, who have any degrees or diplomas also we need your resume so you need to upload a resume which is mandatory you can see the star sign okay so i choose uh, my resume and i can upload it and for all your certificates or participations you can uh, you can upload uh, a file which has all your certificate participation and proof of extra curricular or co-curricular activities uh, so they can be like um, purely academic certificates if you have done any presentation any uh, paper presentation then you if you have any certificate you can upload it here or if you have won in any hall uh, event then such certificates will be considered here okay all right now we have some terms and conditions if you are selected then you will be joining SSGSA in mentorship activities. You need to select this thing because when you join SSGSA, when you become SSGSA member, you become part of a family and you need to help others to, to become a part of this, a member of this family. And you need to certify that all the information is true and correct to the best of my knowledge. And you also need to agree to the following condition, which are the disqualification criteria. If at any stage in the application process, if you found that your your information was wrong or fraudulent you will not be able to complete the uh, you will not be able to apply for ssgsa again okay also if the application is incomplete missing documents or missing pdf then the you will be disqualified so you need to make sure that you review your application after you uh, before you submit your application so once all these conditions are met i can now save information and proceed to the next step Okay. Now this is my very, very, very last step. I can see I can review my application and I can also submit my application. Let's first of all review the application and see what I have done. So you can see all the information in just a single page and you can review your application easily, whatever you have written down. Okay. You can also download your documents or any other, uh, any other certificate. So once you've reviewed, you can, if you think there's some mistake in your application, you can go to previous step and you can, uh, you can change any, any information, but if everything looks good, then you can hit the submit button. Also, you can see at the very top that as I have completed all the steps, the, I can see the green ticks here. And the very final step is just to submit my application. If I'm satisfied with the application. Okay. Uh, this application you can you can edit before the uh, before we close this uh, application before we close this application uh, cycle and you can edit your application and you will be receiving an email that your application is submitted so right now I'm waiting for my application uh, my, my emails that I have received my that the SSGS has received my application or SSGSA has been successfully your application has been successfully submitted so if you think you are not getting the email just check your spam folder so you can see your email here okay all right so once you have uh, done this application once you have got this email check your you should check your spam as well you are good to go and you can then just log out okay uh, Best of luck with your applications and I'm hoping to see you as SSGS scholar this year.